Hello everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Hi, hello, welcome to the start of another weekend vlog. It's windy as shit out there, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> From the state of my hair, my god. It is independent bookstore day in Canada today. So I had to go stop by my local indie, my favorite indie, and that's where I just was. <laughs> so I just spent a hundred bucks. <laughs> Honestly, could have been so much more because I kept like walking around and picking up books and adding them to my pile and then having to remind myself I have an e-reader now and I can get these books for much cheaper on the e-reader or from my library on the e-reader. And so I only picked up two books that were on my list for things to get. Specifically, they are Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. The second book, Map of the Otherlands, I should have said. <laughs> Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, which is book two. I have read already and loved, and I wanted to add it to my collection in the same hardback that I have the first one in. And I also have Lee Bardugo's The Familiar because these have black sprayed edges and they're, it's just so pretty. Also look at the, oh, look at the end pages. Gorge. <laughs> Gorgeous. I think I have this out from the library as well. I think it's waiting for me there. But I wanted a copy because, well, because <laughs> I just did. I just did. I wanted my own copy. And I also picked up a puzzle, which I think I'm going to do today. It's a 500 piece cafe puzzle, which is so pretty. I picked up a 500 piece one instead of a thousand piece because I wanted to be able to actually like complete it in one sitting. But yeah, that was a hundred bucks. I also got a free tote bag out of it. So love that. <laughs> Now I have to go to Walmart, which Walmart on a Saturday is like the least, I really don't want to do it. You gotta go to Walmart. Should also do something with my hair, because what the fuck is this? The wind had its way with it. <laughs> um, but who knows? Gotta go to Walmart, gotta go to the bank, you know, all these lovely things. But yeah, Walmart, I think I'm gonna pick up a couple groceries at Walmart so that I don't have to go actually grocery shopping too. That's the plan. Anyways, it's getting warm in here. I'm gonna start my car, but yeah. Welcome to the weekend. I'll talk about what books I'm gonna plan on reading this weekend when I get home. But it is Saturday, so I don't really have that much time. Last night I went to my friend's birthday. We went out for dinner, which was lovely and fun. And then tomorrow I also have a house for me for my friends, so that's amazing. But then I, I took Monday off because I'm so fucking tired. So I'm so excited for that day because that's gonna be my weekend day to do absolutely nothing, except for teaching. I didn't take it off of teaching. I just took it off of my regular job. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys later. Hello, beautiful people. I'm home now. <laughs> Very windblown. This is what we're working with today, which I don't really mind. Very windblown, got my groceries, went, to the library as well. Oh, I got so many books to show. I also slept wrong on my shoulder, so that was probably a really bad idea to just do right then. We're back, we're cooking. Also, update on the couch. They're gonna fix it for me for like $300, but they're gonna come and get my couch, the people who we bought the couch from, they're gonna come and get it. <laughs> and, oh, I forgot, I forgot. The hummus. Yeah, they're gonna come and get it for me. <laughs> from me in a couple weeks, I don't know when, and then I'm gonna be without a couch, Song's couch, but they're gonna fix it for me, so. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I got the goods. And they're gonna fix it, thank goodness. I don't have to find a new couch or, have, or figure out how to do it ourselves in a DIY function, but for now though, we sit on this side of the couch because the broken side is over there, so. Alas, anyways. <laughs> oh, I'm home. I got so many things to show you. This library, I mean, I already showed you what I got from the my indie bookstore, which is fantastic. So I thought I would do also a library haul because why the heck not? <laughs> and yesterday was the Cozy the Day Away sale. So we could also do a little like, what did I get on my Kobo? That'd be fun. What do you think? <laughs> Anyways, first up, library haul, which honestly might tell me what I'm gonna end up reading this week. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? First, we got The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford, which is the author. Gosh, they have so many books out. <laughs> They've been writing so many books recently. I follow them on TikTok and they are so enjoyable. So enjoyable. <laughs> but yeah, I, I got that one because I've had it on hold forever and I was, I guess it was ready to come in. And then we also have A Shadow Crown, which is book two in Melissa Blair's series, The Halfling Saga. Again, this came in without me realizing it was ready to come in. 
otherwise I would have pushed it into May. <laughs> and then this book, which is one that I requested through the library, which is The Poisons We Drink by Bethany Batiste. It's uh, one of the YA books that was part of that like review bombing thing happening. One thing I'm happy about is that they actually released this one first in paperback instead of hardback. Makes it so much more affordable because at the store today <laughs> I was looking at the YA books as well and I was contemplating getting Fate Breaker by Victoria Aveyard and just like actually having the entire trilogy on my shelves for once. That hardback is $31 for a YA book. I remember when YA hardcovers were $25 and my dad would complain about the prices back then when he had to buy me books and like paperbacks were always like $11 but now paperbacks like the paperbacks in the fantasy section the adult fantasy section are 25 plus some of them are $27 so like that's the price of what hardcovers used to be and now hardcovers are $39.40 I'm happy that this is released in paperback for the YA people but yeah this is apparently really 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 good I just heard Sarah S-E-R-A I think her name is Sarah Who Reads on TikTok. Love, love, love her content. But I just heard her talking about this one and it just made me so intrigued by it. So maybe I'll pick this one up this weekend. Who knows? We do have also three books that all go together that honestly I could do for a series series. I have the entire trilogy of the There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. Why did I get this? Because my friend Julie was talking about them and saying how much she loved them. And I was just in the mood when I put these on hold for something easy and quickly readable. I could do this for a series series video. Why I say that? Because I have read There Will Come a Darkness before. Do I remember anything about it? Literally nothing. I remember not being impressed by it back when I originally read it, but that might've been my mood. That might've been, I don't know. But yeah, so I have book one, There Will Come a Darkness, book two, as the Shadow Rises in book three, Into the Dying Light. And so I have this trilogy that I could read, <laughs> which is apparently is YA, so it should go quickly. And then last, the familiar, which I have, I bought. So this will just go back to the library when I go again. Because I didn't bring any of the books that I had to bring back to the library today, so I'll probably just bring this back when I go again. I'll put it over there. The next person can get it real quick then. <laughs> but yeah, what a stack of possibilities, you know? Goodness gracious. Anyways, all right. So yesterday during the Cozy Fantasy sale, Cozy the Day Away, I ended up getting a couple on my Kobo and then three books on my Kindle app, but I'm going to try and figure out if I can make the Kindle books into EPUBs to put on here. There is a way. The internet has told me there's a way. So I'm going to try and do that so that I can put it on here. But I did buy them so that I can, you know, convert them because they weren't on sale or available on Kobo, but I wanted them. So anyways, <laughs> so the ones I got on here were The Rogue and the Peasant. I wonder if I can just do the cover. Oh, I can. The Rogue and the Peasant. Very fun by Amberly Martin, which is book one in her series. I also got How to Get a Girlfriend. How to Get a Girlfriend When You're a Terrifying Monster. Apparently this is what the cover is telling me it is. <laughs> by Marie Cardno, which apparently, I, the cover is really cute, so I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen. I also got Garden Gus by Karen Nagel, who was the organizer of the entire event, which is just adorable. <laughs> I love I love that cover. I also got Death on the Loper, which I think is a cozy mystery, cozy fantasy mystery. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I got, oh, that one's gonna download, okay. I also got Sword and Thistle by S.L. Rowland on audiobook, because he was the only one who had an audiobook sale, because I really, really enjoyed the Cursed Cocktails audiobook, and that's like book two in that series. I also got The Awakenings, which I think this one is probably my most anticipated one on here. I also got Tools of a Thief by... D. Hale Rambo, which again is a cool cover. I'll pop it up here. There are also a couple more that I got that I cannot remember the name of that aren't loaded on here yet because I bought them direct from the store of the author. I'll pop them up here in a series of things so you can see. And then I got Love at First Lance from Kindle. Oh God, am I gonna remember them all? I don't think I'm gonna remember them all. And then two more from Kindle. I'll pop all the covers up here. It was a really, really good sale. So <laughs> it was just, it was a great sale. And I wanted to grab as much of the freebies I could that I could put onto my Kobo to like support all the authors. It was a good day. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what, what I'm gonna read this week, my friends, or this weekend. I just, I've been feeling so disgusting the past few days. I think it's the, the allergies, seasonal allergies really hit me. I was fighting a migraine on Thursday that lasted till Friday. And then 
Friday just felt like a freight train hit me. And then today I feel okay, but just like not fantastic, you know? But I'm really glad that I'm taking Monday off because that'll give me just another day to recoup from whatever is happening in my body and my brain and my exhaustion, you know? Oh, I got a tea from the bookstore when I went. Mm. So good. I could read Brimstone Angels by Erin M. Evans. That was what I was reading. I could also read The Outlaw or Outlawed by Enum North. I could read the N.K. Jemison book that I've been saying I'm gonna read for a really long time. I could finish the second James Islington book, which is just not, I'm just not in the mood for. I could read some sci-fi. I could read any of these library books. I could read the, one of the books that I got. No. Well, I mean, I could read The Familiar, but I don't know when I'm gonna read my friends. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just sit here for a while and I'm gonna start this puzzle that I have. And maybe if the inkling comes to me, I'll listen to an audiobook while I'm while I'm puzzling, but I'm probably just gonna watch some shows. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna do a puzzle because I've been hankering for a puzzle and this one is just really, really, really cute. So I'm excited about it. And it's only 500 pieces, so it shouldn't take me like a long time, but it should give me enough of an activity that, oh, my shoulder, <laughs> that I actually enjoy it. So we'll see. It's the weekend. Thank you for being here. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all doing well. I'm in a weird rut. I feel like I'm in a weird rut. I was telling this to my therapist the other day that I'm simultaneously like so exhausted from life, which is valid. And also totally alive and my brain just wants to do things. It just, it just wants to do all the creative things. Like it just wants to work on Sage's story. It doesn't want to read. It doesn't want to do anything like that. So. I don't know what's happening, but that's just how things are right now. Anyways, I apologize also for all the traffic noise. I have my window open and I have my door open because it's, wind, it's windy and it's cool out today. So it's nice and fresh. I will let you guys know what I end up reading, what I end up choosing for the weekend. Hopefully I can pick something good <laughs> that'll carry me through. But for now, I think we're gonna do a puzzle and watch a show. I don't know what show, but we're gonna watch something. Get a, get a snack, friends, if you haven't already. And get, get ready. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a puzzle. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> But I thought I'd pop in and let you know that I finished the puzzle and I did not do a single lick of reading. Instead, I watched 14 episodes of Criminal Minds. <laughs> I have never watched Criminal Minds in my life. I remember when I was younger, I never wanted to watch it because there's cold opens in Criminal Minds that were very scary for me as a kid and as a teenager. And honestly, for a long time, I was like, that's just not the kind, the kind of like crime show that I watch, which is so funny <laughs> because like I watched Bones. I've watched, I love crime. I love like true crime stuff. I, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. Yeah, I can scare myself a little bit sometimes with, with things. I'm a, just, I just do that. This show is great. I watched 14 episodes of it today. Fucking loved it. Top to bottom. Anyways, um, I gotta go to bed. I have a housewarming to go to in the afternoon tomorrow. So uh, that is what I'm gonna do. Did I decide what book I'm gonna read? Absolutely not. I have no idea what I'm in the mood for if I'm in the mood for anything at all. I, I really truly don't. I pulled the High Mountain Court from A.K. Mulford down from, from my library stack. And even then I was like, I don't really wanna read that. I don't wanna really read. <laughs> so maybe tomorrow when I get home from the, from the house where my mood will be different. 
or I'll just end up watching more Criminal Minds. Who knows? It was a really good relaxing day and that's what I needed. <laughs> but I'm proud of this puzzle. I did it all in one day. Amazing. I did it actually. It took me a really long time to do, which is so funny. It's a 500 piece puzzle. And it took me a long time to do, but it was really enjoyable the whole way through. Like there weren't any spots that I was like stumped because it's all the same color. Like it was all relatively easy to put together because everything was so distinct. And that's what my favorite part of puzzles is. Like when the design itself is very distinct, like across the canvas, it makes it much easier than when you just have like a solid color background, which is so annoying. This is definitely a really cute one. And it's a really good quality one that I'm going to keep and redo at some point. I think it's a good, just like mindless activity. <laughs> mindless activity when you're watching copious amounts of criminal minds <laughs> tomorrow i will read something tomorrow i will read something i promise this is a reading vlog after all and have i read anything not a damn thing <laughs> i think my options i think i'm gonna narrow it down for myself because i don't want to be overwhelmed with the options so four options we're gonna do there will come a darkness for something fast and ya we're gonna do brimstone angels on my kobo we're gonna do the last half of an echo of things to come because I need to finish that. <laughs> the book that I've been saying I'm gonna read, This Bad Boy. I also have some middle grades on this list. <laughs> I was just thinking of all the audiobooks that I have access to at the moment. I have a couple and I actually have audiobooks for, I'm just so tired, I just keep yawning. The Marvelers and its sequel by Danielle Clayton. And, oh, my body was just like, yeah, maybe that. So I'm gonna take these down. Maybe I can pop these off tomorrow when I get home because they're middle grades, so they should go fast. And I have the audiobooks. So those are my options. Either some middle grade, which I haven't read any middle grade yet this year. Some wonderful middle grade. Hobo reading. Library book number one. Finishing this bad boy. Or some N.K. Jemison. Good choices all around. But those are my choices for tomorrow. When I wake up and decide what I'm going to do. And then, of course, going to buy Fred's. Oh my god, housewarming. <laughs> Just keep you hunting. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, I'm going to refill this with water. What a good day, though. There's always something to say about walking around a bookstore. I'm just doing a couple little errands and coming back. I'm just sitting on the couch and doing something for me all day. Like, not that I don't do that every weekend, but deciding to do the puzzle and deciding to not like force myself into reading or writing or anything productive, productive, <laughs> you know, deciding to do a puzzle instead. I like that my brain did that. I don't know why. And I think knowing that I've given myself an extra long weekend, or not an extra long, but just given myself a long weekend. I have Monday off of my regular job, at least. My brain is a little bit more calm, which is good. And knowing that I have tomorrow evening to myself as well is nice. Yeah, like I plan on being home at a reasonable time tomorrow because we're hanging out at two in the afternoon. Should be good and I should be back home at a reasonable time. Get cozy on the couch, probably watch some more Criminal Minds. <laughs> and then read something. I actually really have a hangering now for those middle grades. Okay, mood reader has been activated. <laughs> so it might be the middle grades, but we'll see what the mood is tomorrow. What a good Saturday. Actually, Sunday. Did I not say happy Sunday yet? Happy Sunday. <laughs> My goodness, where have I been all day? <laughs> it's a good question. It is almost 2.30 in the morning and I just finished watching another episode of Criminal Minds because of course I was doing that. <laughs> oh, I can feel myself getting so hooked on this, which is not, I can feel myself getting so hooked. I'm already hooked <laughs> on this show, which is not good for any other productivity ever, you know? <laughs>
but I did manage to read the entirety of The Marvelers as I was watching Criminal Minds because I am nothing if not a multitasker. <laughs> And this was so fun to be back in this world. I'm glad that I did this because a lot of the things that I thought were at the end of this book were actually in the, I keep wanting to say Amina, but that's not her name. Amari, Amari and the Knight Brothers book. That one, I remember, and it's like conflating with this one in my head, or it was. Now that I've read this, I remember what goes on in it. So that's great and perfect and awesome. And... I'm gonna try to get through this one tomorrow. Seems like a good idea to just dive right into it. I don't know how many are gonna be in this series, to be honest with you, but I hope there's a lot because this is genuinely such a lovely, bright, colorful, genuinely full of heart book. I, yeah, I'm enjoying, I enjoyed the first one so much. I originally gave it like four and a half stars. It's probably like a four star for me now, but still a stunning book, still very good. If you wanna read something that is full of black girl magic and has like the magic school trope that just is done so well, read this. I think what I, what was wrong with my brain <laughs> was that it was conflating it, as I said, with Amari and the Night Brothers. And what I didn't like about Am Amari and the Night Brothers, even though it has a very similar thing going on, it's a girl going to a magic school, essentially. There's a lot more going on in Amari. It's too much. There's too much going on in Amari. And these are so perfectly streamlined and so tight and nicely woven into its own world. And there's not like a million things trying to be done, like what I found in Amari. So this follows our main character, Ella, who at the beginning of the novel has gotten this letter and she is the very first conjurer to be accepted into the Marveler Academy, essentially. So there's two kinds of magic in here, mainly. There's probably more, but there's two that are focused on. There's the Marvelers, and then there's the Conjurers. And the Marvelers are very, hmm, I don't even know how to describe the magic, but there's a, it's a different way of magic. It's a different way of magic. It's more analytical, it's more practice, it's more like straightforward, it's commanding. That's the word, it's commanding magic. You're telling it to do stuff. Whereas the Conjurers are, in relationship with the magic. So they are asking the magic to do things and coaxing it and singing to it. And it's a very natural way of doing things. And the conjurers are so looked down upon. And our, our, main, our main girl, Ella, like when she goes to school, all of the girls there are just so rude to her. They're immediately just like so cruel to her. This young girl goes through so much of the bullying and the antagonism and the like not outright like hurting her physically or anything, just like the notes that she gets, the threatening messages, the fact that she was removed from her original dorm room to be put into a room with the other outcast, Bridget. And it's just like, the amount of stuff that she goes through and the amount of antagonism and just straight up bullying and it, I don't even know if I can call it racism, but it's like, it's it's like racism based on magic, of course. Like the, the whole like Conjurer versus Marveler is very like white versus black because there's a lot of the like, white magic is better, white light is purer, we don't want black light here or dark light, you know? But there's a lot, it's like very multi multicultural. The Marvelers are very multicultural. So there are black people who are Marvelers. So it's just, this specific branch of magic, the conjurers specifically, who are um, oppressed and, and looked down on. There's many reasons why, but of course, because it's a young girl narrating the story, we don't really get like the nuance of everything, um, which I think is done really, really well, because it's like, it's just this young girl going about her life and trying to make friends and trying to learn stuff at school. I think that's one thing that I wish could have been done better was the actual like learning about magic stuff. I feel like I didn't learn anything and I feel like our girl didn't learn anything either like she didn't really like there's a whole thing in here where you pick you get your marvel is found out at some point which is interesting to me because it proves that at the end of this like she has a marvel even though she is a conjurer I'm intrigued by the fact that like conjurers can have marvels so like you can have both magic systems that's interesting to me so I'm interested to see if that's like examined more the fact that she's a conjurer with a mar with a marvel like that's so interesting to me but she doesn't really like the whole time she's like wondering what her marvel could be like the marvel that she ends up having at the end of this like it doesn't match anything that we've learned about Ella throughout the book like I feel like we could have had more of Ella actually like finding something in her magic and learning more about the actual Marveler powers. There's not a lot of actual magic in here about her actually doing anything or getting better at magic or any of that. So we didn't get any 
hints as to what her marveling thing would be unless it related directly to conjuring and i think that's what should have been the pe the choice by the author here i, th I think it would have been better to see her with a specific conjuring based marvel i think that would have been great to like tie the two together um and then it would make a lot more sense as to like what her marvel would have been but like the marvel that's picked at the end here is almost a bridget marvel in my mind because bridget is very she's she can knit things into like she can see things and she as she and she becomes like possessed by the knitting <laughs> that's the only way i can describe it like she goes into a trance and then she speed knits and just like this image forms in, in the knitting, kind of like the Lady of Shalott-esque, you know? And it's it's a lot of the same images over and over again of like this one woman's face that's coming back. Like she doesn't know who she is. It's like all this mystery. And what Ella ends up getting at the end as her marvel, like kind of to me feels more like an, like it's like a, a match to Bridget's instead of being her own thing. I wish that her conjure had been her own thing. And I wish that we had gotten more magic in here and actually seen the kids learning and getting better at their magic specifically. Because it's so focused on like what's happening at the school that we don't really get <laughs> them learning at the school, you know? And that's my favorite part of any school narrative ever. It's it's my favorite, favorite part is actually seeing the kids studying and learning and getting better at what they're doing. It's not just them focused entirely on the mystery. And I think that's in here, it's focused entirely on the mystery. <laughs> so I think that's my only critique about it because otherwise it's like beautiful and brilliant and bright because like the magic in this world is so vibrant and and, and getting to see both the marvelers and their whole shtick and then getting to see the conjurers when when ella goes home for like christmas and stuff like it's beautiful and it's vibrant and it's set in our own world too which is kind of fun it's like set in new orleans and there's mention of new york and halloween and christmas and all that kind of stuff so it's set in our world so i like that i love when books are set in our world anyways maybe i will get my answers and my wishes in this one we will see what ends up happening as we go into this one i'm intrigued i'm intrigued to see what that whole like bad guy plot is going to be because we really don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of it in here even though we do get the point of view from the villain in here i don't even know why she's a villain at this point i mean i probably missed it but like she's of this group of people called the aces i don't really know what they did but they did something really terrible and they were all like blacklisted from from stuff and homegirl the main girl was locked away and at the beginning of this book she gets out and like every once in a while like there's a chapter of hers and it's her kind of traveling around and getting specific things for stuff um she's also stealing people's marvels which is really interesting so yeah i'm, I'm interested to see where it goes in here but yeah that was genuinely such a delight and a good time and I'm glad that I did that. <laughs> I'm glad that I um, actually did read today instead of just sitting down and um, watching more of Criminal Minds. <laughs> Thank goodness I have tomorrow off too. Um, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna get all cozy. Just fall asleep. <laughs> and then whenever I wake up tomorrow, maybe I'll read some of this. Actually, I really do want to read some of this. So I think that's gonna be my day tomorrow besides going to piano later in the day. But I have the day off from my regular job. So. That's the best, that's amazing. That was today. Oh, and my friend's housewarming was lovely. It was so great. We did some crafts um, because that's what we do when we get together now. It just seems like <laughs> the trend. Um, we just end up getting together and doing crafts. Painted a paint pot, which I have a little baby spider plant in, but it's in one of these little things. And I'm gonna need to get a little saucer or something to sit under the pot before I can water that in there because speaking of, I need to actually water this. <laughs> Ooh, it's very dry because there's a hole in the bottom of the pot and then i also did this cute little cactus right here and i'm hanging a bunch of friendship bracelets off of these are all friendship bracelets that i'm making in preparation for the hosier concert in august because sometimes i get bored at my desk and i'm just like i'm gonna make a bracelet because <laughs> i have a bunch of beads left over from the bracelets that i made for the noah khan concert and i don't know if you can tell but i've been wearing a lot of bracelets recently I just love friendship bracelets. I love the trend. I do. I really, really do. Taylor Swift sang about it and all of us are just like, let's make it for everything. Everything all the time. <laughs> but yeah, that was my day today. Went to my friend's place for the afternoon. Very fun, very lovely. And then hung out with them, came home and made an incredible soup for dinner. It was a recipe that I found on Pinterest that was a simultaneously, like a normal soup, like a normal soup base that I usually make. So like celery, carrots, onion garlic you know the whole shebang and may i made a roux this time i usually don't make a roux 
And then I did chicken stock, which I didn't actually have chicken stock. I just had boolean, which like does the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> so made my own chicken stock with boolean. It was it was like it's supposed to be like an orzo soup, like a lemon orzo chicken soup. I used farfalline, however you say this, far farfalline, which are like. It's like farfalle, which are the bows, but like really teeny tiny ones, um, teeny tiny pasta. And then I got a rotisserie chicken <laughs> from the grocery store. I ran to the grocery store on the way home because I was like, I really want to make this soup and I don't have any of the ingredients. That was really enjoyable. It took me like an hour and a half or something just puttering around in my, in my kitchen and doing that. And it was a good time. It was quite tasty. I had two bowls of it. <laughs> because I can. It's my soup. And I have so much left over. <laughs> Which is great because now I have lunches and dinners for the week. Anyways, I sound very stuffed up. Which is not fun. <laughs> I have my windows closed tonight too because the street cleaners were out and it was cold so I decided to shut my windows for once. But apparently I had my candle going because <laughs> I was cooking and when I came home my apartment smelled like weed because my neighbors were smoking, I guess. It smelled awful in here. I walked in and I was like, oh, I just smelled the fucking worst. So I um, I lit the candle and now my entire, I sound so stuffed up right now. And it's because of the candle being lit. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but apparently I'm very sensitive to scent. And even like my mom started doing that, started getting that when I was younger um, or when I lived at home. She would be like, oh, we gotta blow out the candle. It's bothering me too much. I started becoming like that. And now if the candle's on for more than a few hours, like I literally can't breathe out of my nose. I love candles, but girl, they mess me up. <laughs> Anyways, I'm in good bed. But yeah, what a good day, what a relaxing day. Tomorrow is a me day, minus the fact that I have to work in the evening, but other than that, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be wonderful. I'm excited to have tomorrow off. Pressures, no pressures, no stress, love. Anyways, I'll talk, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for Monday. Hello, beautiful friends. I just got home from work. <laughs> what a day. I mean, what a day. I mean, <laughs> I only worked this evening, so that was nice. And I gotta say, having a day off boy boy was it a good choice on my part <laughs> i got about halfway through the memory thieves today and then i started editing this vlog so that i wouldn't have a lot to do tonight when i got home from work so yeah so i'm about halfway through i'm on page 190 i'm enjoying it it's very cute it's continuing the cute wholesome vibes the good magical sweet little girl vibes i mean our main character's 12 so like what can you expect right <laughs> yeah it's been just a lovely good time you know having it today as an extra day was quite nice waking up and knowing i didn't have to like get to my computer do anything i took it slow i washed my hair i made my coffee i had just the best i don't know sitting on the couch and i know i don't do much more <laughs> Like, even when I'm sitting at my computer, I'm, I work from home, so it's not like it's a big change of environment having a day off, but like mentally, knowing that I have today off, prime, you know? It's great. <laughs> Anyways, so this weekend, I went in having very little gumption to do absolutely anything, had a very busy weekend with my friend's birthday that we celebrated at a restaurant on Friday night, and then having independent bookstore day on Saturday, and then yesterday having another friend's like housewarming day. I, I went in not knowing what I was gonna read and anything like that, but I ended up doing a fantastic little puzzle from the bookstore that I picked up on independent bookstore day, which is still like out on my coffee table because I like it so much. But I also like, I wanna do this puzzle again. So I might undo the whole thing and pack it away and then do it again like next weekend or something. I don't know why. I just, I liked I liked doing this puzzle a whole lot. It's a good puzzle to do. And it like kept my brain really engaged the whole time. So <laughs> that would be nice if I could do that again. Um, so I, I do wanna put it away before I wreck it by spelling something on it or something. So I did that with my Caduceus Clay puzzle. <laughs> over the winter holidays or something i think two two winters ago i don't know but i also read all of the marvelers and half of the memory thieves which we love to see this is a wonderful little middle grade series that if you want something really wholesome and moves pretty well and it doesn't take you a long time to read these books at all and they're like they give you that kids going to magic school feeling that i've missed 
and it does it in a really beautiful way it handles really wonderful social commentary and just i don't know like the kids in here are so lovely as well i'm excited to see where this keeps going because i'm now halfway through the memory thief which is book two and i'm enjoying it like i was listening to it today it's 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 pretty good like this is a very very solid middle grade series and i don't see enough people talking about this one so highly recommend anyways so I did that <laughs> as well. Have yet to run the first one through Copile, but I feel like it's going to be a solid four star, which is amazing. But I also wanted to show you something that I picked up today because I am very excited about what I picked up today or what I got today. I didn't pick it up today. I got it in the mail because I ordered it a while ago from Vistaprint. <laughs> this is mainly for me to have as a like business card type of thing. I may eventually do something like this to sell kind of like I do with my signed book plates for my books because I can't do signed copies because it's just like the shipping from Canada is ridiculous. I would never make you guys pay that much shipping. It's literally ridiculous. I think the last time I shipped a book it was like $22 which is about the same price of the book full price so it's not worth it. So I do sign book plates if you're ever interested. I have a Kofi shop. Maybe one day I'll add these to it. Um, I'd have to figure out like pricing and stuff like that and if it would be even feasible to do. I made bookmarks <laughs> with the permission of my cover artist of course but I have these beautiful bookmarks with my two babies on them. So we have of course the boys which their bookmark is so sweet and lovely and then the back is a QR code that might activate <laughs> on my screen um that it takes you to a landing page on my website that has like a bunch of different places you can buy my books from so it has like bookshop.org and amazon for the us and then it has canadian amazon and the international uk amazon as well for my international people and then it has a note saying that you can also just order it from your local indie and then i have my girls which i just love this so much I love it so much and basically the same on the back yeah so i'm gonna use these as like business cards because <laughs> i i think my friend yelani originally told me about doing something like this like months ago as a like potential feature thing like she's like oh you like you should consider doing like bookmarks or something and then when i was at the tessa bailey launch with my friends the uh, one of the we met an author in line we met a romance author and she had promotional bookmarks and she said that like, it's like, what's the next best thing other than just doing a, like a business card? Like what would readers actually use? Bookmarks. And then my friend Sophia was like, Jen, you should do that. So having my friends, both two of them be like, do it. I was like, I should. So I did. I'm quite proud of them. I just designed them in Canva and printed them through Vistaprint. So I now have a nice stack of bookmarks, which I've already given one to my student <laughs> because she she's like 19 years old and she she got a copy of A Little Luck that arrived a few days ago. So I was like, here, have a bookmark, which is so sweet of her for buying my books. But any who's all fun purchase today. I got some crazy bookmarks. This is very fun. This is look at this. Oh, my goodness me. Anyways, <laughs> but yes, my friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me this weekend as I take a day off, do a little relaxing, maxing, relaxing. I think I'm going to make some dinner. Do I have leftover soup from yesterday? I think I might have some leftover soup from yesterday because it's easy and it's quick <laughs> and it's already 930 at night. So I need something just to tie me over. But anyways, I also watched an egregious amount of Criminal Minds this weekend. I've introduced myself to that franchise and I love it so much. I actually stopped myself from watching it again today because I knew that if I got into it, I would do nothing else, which is fine because it's my day off, but I wanted to also read some of the Marvelers. So I think I just had like Gab Smolders on the TV today to focus on the Marvelers book two properly, you know? Anyways. Yes, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear about your weekends and how you guys are doing as we come to the end of April and uh, go into May this week. Oh my God, holy bananas. <laughs> how is it already May this week? Goodness me. Anyways, my beautiful friends, I'll catch you in another video very soon. Stay kind and keep on reading. Bye.